Go ahead. How you doing tonight? This is uh, Rob Butler with uh, Stage and Studio TV. We're here at Hatchies in Utica. And I'm here with my Fender Strat, my Marshall amp. I'm going to talk to you. Uh, we're going to basically show you how to play Highway Star by Deep Purple. It's one of the greatest rock songs ever. It's got everything in it. Everything from good, solid rhythm playing to just an outstanding lead. It's got arpeggios. It's got everything you could, could imagine. And uh, the guitar player on it was Richie Blackmore, one of the greatest rock guitar players ever. And uh, I'm trying to duplicate his sound and what he was using back then. What I've got here is a, a Fender Stratocaster. Um, he used a, like a 19, probably 69 or 70 model. This one's a bit newer. His headstock on the 69 and 70 models were just a little bit thicker or wider headstock. So it might give you a little bit better tone. But I, uh, basically the pickups that we've got in this thing duplicate it pretty close. They're DiMarzio Fast Tracks. This is a pre-wired DiMarzio pick guard. So we've got three DiMarzio Fast Track humbucking pickups in here. Um, and the amp I'm using is a uh, Marshall JCM 2000 dual super lead. Got it running through a 212 cabinet that's mic'd with Celestian speakers. And uh, for effects, I've got a little bit of delay going. Um, Richie basically just plugged straight into a Marshall, and he used a, uh, like an Echoplex type thing, a tape delay. It was uh, almost like a tape recorder is what he used. But uh, it was pretty much straight into the amp, and that's kind of what I'm doing. And uh, you know, I'm going to throw this delay on just to give a little bit of uh, definition on the, uh, on the leads. Let's do that over again. The delay wasn't on. Sorry. Hello, how are you doing tonight? This is Rob Butler at Hatchies in Utica with Stage and Studio TV. And I'm here tonight uh, with my Fender Strat, my Marshall Lamp, and uh, I'm going to show you how to play Deep Purple's Highway Star. Highway Star was off the Machine Head record and is one of the greatest rock songs ever. Um, got one of the greatest guitar solos ever by a guitarist by the name of Richie Blackmore, who's truly an innovator, um, great player. And uh, the equipment that Richie basically used back then, he used like Marshall, they were called 200 watt major amps, Marshall majors. And I've got a JCM Marshall, and I dialed in that sound pretty close. Um, my, I've got a JCM 2000. Now the Fender Strat that I've got has DiMarzio fast track pickups in it. Richie used a, about a 69 or 70 Fender Strat that was, uh, had a maple neck like this one does. The body was like this. The headstock was just a little wider to give you a little bit thicker tone. Kind of compensated for that a little bit by putting a little bit hotter pickups in there. The DiMarzio Fast Tracks sing a little bit. And uh, effects wise, I'm basically just running into my Boss Tuner and into a TC Electronics Flashback Delay Unit. And I've got the repeat set, uh, just kind of a subtle del uh, delay to where you can kind of uh, they give you kind of that hall type sound and plug straight into the Marshall JCM 2000. On the gain channel, I'm using more of the tube amp, power amp type distortion and not so much of the preamp. So, you know, you get more of a cleaner type tone, but still with some gain and, and a bit of power behind it. And I'd also like to preface that this, uh, this lesson and this song is kind of cut out for somebody that uh, has at least intermediate guitar skills. You're going you're gonna to need to spend some time working up some of these runs when we get to the solo. And you're going to need to use a thick pick, a thick guitar pick. And the reason being, when you start playing fast and using tremolo picking, you don't want a pick that's going to be flapping on the string. It won't sound right. You want something that's going to articulate the note and basically attack the note with no bending in it. I'll give you an example, like with tremolo picking, it's just like real quick up and down picking. If you used a pick that was kind of uh, floppy, you wouldn't be able to get that clear definition there. So, real important to use a thick pick. What I've got here is a Jim Dunlop 2.0 millimeter. That's about the thickest pick you can get. I like it. It's got a little grip on it. It's, uh, it's good for that type of playing. So, the song starts off, the band just kind of comes in playing solid eighth notes. And uh, I'll give you an example of that. It's in the key of uh, G. So, it kicks off like this. starts to build. It starts to build and the drums kick in and uh, 
basically they're playing that for about uh, 16 measures before the chords start to kick in. And uh, you know that solid eighth note rhythm is just going on G. And then the guitar, basically the organ come in with, uh, it's, a, it's like a D chord played over open strings. So you've got the D here, you got the D here and everything else is open. But you're not hitting the low E open. So you're basically coming in with this pattern, it starts in D, you slide it down to C, then you hit an F, then you're back to G. So I'll give you an example of how that's going. And this is going on over that driving eighth note rhythm that I was telling you about. So over this, in come the chords of the, uh, you know, it sounds like an organ, you can duplicate it with, uh, with a guitar. Um, the organ player was John Lord, amazing uh, keyboard player who just recently passed away, but uh, he comes in with this. What I'm doing there is you're hearing that driving going on and I hit the B flat and I'm not hitting the whole B flat chord itself because the bass, the bass is just riding that G. That's all the bass is doing. It's just riding a solid eighth note with the drummer. They're building it up. You know something's about ready to happen. Then Ian Gillen, the singer, just lets out this massive scream um, and it's going on for probably 24 to 38 measures. And a measure in music is normally timed off in fours. So the way it would count off would be like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. That is two measures right there. So every time you count four and, that's, that's a full measure. So the downbeat is the number, the and is the upbeat. So like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. That's four measures right there. So they just play that and build that up and it's just building up dynamically. Then all at once, you hear the singer, Ian Gillen, just blast out that scream. The drummer, Ian Pace, just, just does this uh, roll, and it kicks the band in with this, which is C to B flat. And uh, basically, it's a power chord, which is a fifth, OK? You're playing the, the root note, the fifth, and the root note again. You can play a full bar chord, which is what that is, or you can play the fifth. The fifth's probably a little bit tighter sounding. The full chord is, sounds fuller. But you've got the whole band playing it. If you're playing it with your band, just try it both ways. To see which way you like it the best. So it basically, once the song kicks in, they hit that C to B flat, and then they're back to that, uh, that first verse. And it's uh, basically, it goes from G down to F. And I'll give you an example. So that's the first half of the verse. So they play G. It's like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So it's like four measures, and then B flat to C back to B flat, then back to G. Then they do it again. Then to F. Then it walks down. It walks down a half step at a time. When it hits F, it's on F for two measures. It's, take that back. It's four measures on the, on the F. And it just walks down to the D. So it plays four measures on that D. Then it goes up into the next part, which is an A7 with a ninth added. It's also a chord that's commonly used in a lot of like blues type stuff. Hendrix uses it in Purple Haze, like as the first chord in Purple Haze. So 
so it's just a regular A ninth chord. With the C note added in. So in the way it's used in that song, you're kind of pivoting off. You're pivoting off the open A. walks down from that F down to the D for four measures, then it goes up to that A9 with the seventh added in. Then the chorus. There's a drum roll there. When they hit that A, the break is... One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and on the three and four they hit the C and they hit the B flat again just like the beginning of the song and they go back into the second verse so it just repeats itself so I'll play that whole thing for you without talking I've explained the chords now I'm going to play the second verse That's it. First verse, then into the second verse. Another thing the guitar player can do that sounds pretty cool, and I've tried this, is because you're playing off of an A tonality on that, that A9, so if one guitar is playing that, you don't necessarily want to duplicate that same thing. Or if you've got a keyboard player, and the keyboard player, the organist, is playing that, you don't want to necessarily duplicate that you can play a root note of an A down here um, and it basically really blends and it sounds really powerful and you're playing the open A and you're sliding from G into A and it goes like this so that would work as well so there you have it. It's the first and second verse. And the other thing I, I might want to emphasize when you're playing that rhythm is to make it even sound a little tighter and a little more percussive. Play that rhythm by muting the strings a little bit with your right hand. And the way you do that is you take your hand like this and you just kind of lay it on the strings while you're playing. And you, you just kind of get that. When you're hitting that driving rhythm, you're muting it, but when you're letting loose on those power chords on that slide from F down to D, you're letting those chords ring out. It's got a lot of power to it when you do it that way. Um, and it builds dynamic in the song, too. So, you know, it's also important when you're playing rhythm guitar and you've got a vocalist sometimes to make sure the vocalist is being heard. You don't want to necessarily overpower him, but you still want to be powerful and that muting technique comes in real handy when you're playing rhythm guitar. So we went through the intro, we went through the first and second verse. Now comes the organ solo. And that is basically based over a pattern of D, it's eight measures in D, then it goes up to A for four measures, then it starts to descend down a half step at a time, which ends up down at F sharp. Then the second time through the descent, you end up on F, for two measures, then D on uh, two measures of four. We'll play it, and I'll tell you then at that time. Then back to A, then it comes the bridge. 
So I'm going to give you an example of that, and I'll walk into the bridge. So after the second chorus, there's a rest there. You know, highway star, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's like a three-measure rest. The drummer will lead you in with a, with a roll. And then, instead of the, it always leads into the verse, you just jump right into the D. And you start muting the string on that rhythm. And you play four measures, and it goes like this. I'll take that back, that's eight measures, <laughs> sorry. So it's eight measures on D, then it's going to go up to A. So let's try that again. important that you count that out when you're playing. It's important when you're playing rhythm guitar too, especially if you're playing music that is kind of progressive.